can help you. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I don't want to hurt anyone, but it feels kind of good. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2022 horror remake, Firestarter. A film that is uh, obviously written by Stephen King, directed by Keith Thomas, and it stars Zac Efron, Ryan Kira Armstrong, uh, Sidney Lemon, and Michael uh, Grey Eyes. Right. This film focuses on a young girl called Charlie McGee. Her parents... Andy and Vicky, um, we learned fairly early in the film, have got um, telekinetic powers, you know, they've got all that kind of stuff going on, and obviously their daughter has a gift as well, her gift is fire, uh, that they've trying to suppress ever since she was a baby, they've been on the run from the government for many, many years, and as she is growing up, Charlie's powers are becoming more uncontrollable, which leads to the government tracking them down and a confrontation. Right. What are my thoughts on Firestarter? Right. I think the first thing I want to start off by saying is um, I can't honestly say I'm a fan of the book or anything because I've never read Firestarter. Um, I can't honestly say I'm a fan of the original from the 80s that starred Drew Barrymore and David Keith. Because even though I've, I have seen it, it's such a long time ago, I haven't seen it for a long time. And let's be honest, it's not the most beloved Stephen King property that's ever been made into a film. I think that's also fair to say. When people say to you, what's your favourite Stephen King adaptation on the big screen? You could ask 100 people and I bet nobody will say Firestarter. So let's not pretend that the original is deemed a classic, because it certainly isn't. Uh, deemed a classic by any stretch of the imagination. So if th if they were looking to remake um, a past Stephen King adaptation that didn't necessarily work the first time round, I think Firestarter is a fairly logical choice. However, did this uh, remake deliver? Honestly, not really. Um, I, w I was fairly disappointed with this film. I don't think it's horrifically bad or anything. I've been looking at some reviews of this. Um, and there are some fairly cruel people out there that are just dismissing it at ones and zeros out of ten and all this kind of stuff. I think as soon as you see um, a film being remade, I think it's it's, it's pretty much do doomed to failure anyway these days because the cynicism out there of people and... The fact that people just want to criticise these days an awful lot of the time um, will, I think, certainly affect most films that decide to uh, remake um, a past film, especially if it's a classic. But as I've said, I don't think the original Firestarter could be deemed a classic, personally, anyway. I'm sure it has its fans out there that would defend it. I thought this film started off fairly promisingly, actually. I thought the dynamic between uh, mum and dad and the girl was good. Um, the fact that we knew a little bit about their powers, but not too much. The fact that we weren't subjected to reams and reams of flashbacks, uh, I appreciated. I thought the, the film did a decent job of letting us know, setting up what had happened in the past and how they got to where they were without um, over-explaining it or masses of flashbacks. So I thought this, the initial setup was good. Um, and then the slow build of her power sort of thing coming to light as she's getting older, how she's struggling to control them, the conflict between the mum and dad and how they need to be dealing with her, and all this kind of stuff, I thought was a nice setup. I think this film fell apart about halfway through, maybe a little bit less. I mean, fell apart might be a little bit dramatic, but I just, you know, they've been on the run for so long. And then this shadowy government agent gets phoned up and uh, brought out a retirement to track them down and bring this girl in. Uh, unless I missed something, how did he find them? Uh, you know, conveniently just found them. 
Um, and I suppose, you know, with a little bit of investigating, it might be possible, but you literally, you know, almost like the next scene, he turns up sort of thing. So uh, this was one of those films that like to feed us lots of convenient plot devices to move the film along that I just found a little bit silly. You know, again, there was later in the film, they, they needed to find them. So a person who had given them um, safety sees a news report saying how bad the, you know, Zac Efron character is. So he phones the authorities. You know, it's just felt all very convenient. And it all gets a little bit silly by the end. Um, and for me, I, I, one part of it, I, I genuinely really struggled to forgive. Again, it was another convenient plot device to move the film along. It gets to a point in the film where Charlie, the girl, who is on her own at this point, a young girl, let's say she's 10. I'm not sure it actually explains how old she is. I think in the original she was 8. She might even be 8 in this. So let's say an 8 or even a 10 year old girl has to find where Zac Efron is being held by these shady government agents. Uh, and she just turns up and where they are. And she's supposed to be psychically linked and stuff to her dad. I get that. But still, I just found it all a little bit convenient. And ultimately, this is a horror film that isn't particularly horrific or scary. I don't remember feeling scared, certainly at all. There's some burn effects here and there and all this kind of stuff. It just all get felt a little bit silly to me by the end, which was, I think, a real shame. Do I think this is a horrifically bad remake? No, I've seen worse. Do I think it's watchable? But, you know, if it comes on Netflix or something, I'd probably check it out. I was toying with the idea of a 6 out of 10, but ultimately I think the failings really start letting this one down. So I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. I think it is certainly watchable and entertaining. Um, but it is not a complete and utter waste of your time. And interestingly as well, John Carpenter did the score for this. I just think it's a very generic by the numbers uh, remake. I can't honestly comment on how it differs from the novel because I've not read it. I can't honestly comment how much it differs from the original because it's such a long time since I saw it. So it may possibly try to stand on its own two feet and certainly stumble, I think. So that's my review for Firestarter. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.